My name is John Albison and I'm here to talk to you about three reasons why people give. For far too long we've misunderstood people's hearts and we've misunderstood their primary motivations on why they give and support us in the first place. And because of this, we've been very ineffective in connecting our message with people's hearts. And I guarantee you, if you can't touch their hearts, you will not touch their wallets. Reason number one, people give so they can make a difference. People don't give out of obligation or pity so much. They give because they want to make something happen. They're trying to make the world a better place, to be salt and light in the world, to live lives of consequence. These are people who are created on purpose for a purpose. And because that's a core motivation, they naturally respond to appeals with vision that's going to make a difference. So what we need to do is understand as churches, we really only have one product to sell them. And that is change lives. That is what we do. And if our church isn't actually changing any lives, if we're not actually making a difference, quite frankly, they shouldn't be supporting us. So what do we need to do to connect to them on this level? Well, first, we need to present a clear action plan on how we're specifically going to change those lives. Vague promises aren't very useful. We need to have a plan that, you know what, at our church, this is what we're going to do. This is who we're going to reach, and this is how we're going to reach them. When they see that clear action plan, they're going to want to volunteer for it. They want to get behind it and support it and support it financially. We want to make sure when we describe this, we describe an emotionally compelling cause with a personal impact story. So, for example, if someone says, hey, if you give we're going to increase our outreach capacity by 14%. 14% isn't very emotionally compelling. But instead, if you say, if you support us, we're going to be reaching more people like Sandy. Sandy is a 16-year-old girl who came to Christ two months ago, and we just baptized her. Here's her story. When people can emotionally connect to change lives with a real story, they're much more likely to support what you're doing. We also want to make sure when we frame this, we're offering the heroic role for the giver to play. Far too often, we want to take credit and we want to be the hero. But we need to understand very clearly, this isn't about us. It's about them. And it's about them taking their next step in following Jesus. We're not the hero of the story. We want to make sure that the giver realizes that they've got the role to play. Theologically, we understand that they're men and women made in the very image of God, created on purpose for a purpose. We want them to understand that identity in Christ. We want them to get out their capes, and be the heroes that God has called them to be. Second reason people give is because they trust you. People don't often give to strangers. I'm sure you've noticed this as a pastor. I know when I was a senior pastor, I don't think a week went by when I didn't get another missionary coming across my desk asking for support who I didn't know, never heard of. Very, very few of those appeals ever got a response because I didn't know who they were. We need to understand that people give to people that they trust. So first of all, they have to trust your heart. It's all about who you are, pastor, and do they trust you? And because of this, it's a super important that you build relationships with your givers, that they know your heart. They have that kind of connection with you. They give because they trust your vision. So it's not just that you're a nice guy, but that you have a vision. So what you need to do is be clear and compelling with that vision. It can't be vague, we're just going to reach people or something like that. We want that to be clear, we want it to be compelling, we want it to be motivating, we want it to touch people's hearts. They go because they trust your leadership that you are going to put your money where your mouth is, that this isn't mere talk. And so you have to develop a track record of actually getting things done. 
The words that need to be able to describe you and your ministry is action, not words. Any promise you make of the future must be based on the results of the past. You need to be a pastor of action, someone who gets things done. The third reason people give is because they trust the organization. Now, this is a ball I see churches drop all the time. And here's a fundamental truth. People do not give to lost causes. So often I've seen churches come and say, we're such a pathetic church. We're so pitiful. We're sick. We're weak. We're dying. Please, please give to us. Those kind of appeals very frequently backfire. Uh, and I've seen this with my own eyes. This is not how you connect with people. People do not want to take their hard-earned money that they've sacrificed in and invest that in a sinking ship. So what we need to do is tell the story of what exciting things we did with their gift last time and what exciting things we're going to do when they give again. That when they give, something is going to result. And this is an organization that has a track record of doing things and is going to do things again. That they trust in the organization. And once they give, then it's our obligation to actually deliver and have real community impact. One of the sad things I've seen during the COVID-19 crisis is many churches complaining that we haven't been declared an essential service. Well, quite frankly, a lot of churches are just religious country clubs that only care for and do things for themselves. They're anything but essential. You need to make sure that your vision and that your action plan go outside of these four walls, that you're actually going to be salt and light in your community, you're actually going to follow the Great Commission, and you're actually going to make a difference.